Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. There you go. Let me, uh, let's see here. Where should we start? Where do we want to start, Walt? You know, I want to, uh, I want to cover, like, we've got Pete here. I want to obviously talk about Pete. I want to talk about Brownells. I want to talk a little bit about the past. I think the past, it, there's a lot of stuff about Brownells and, and how it started out there. And for sure, I'm always happy to talk about that. And there may be people who don't know. So we'll, I would like to get into that. This is the only thing that, we, that I have planned. I want to talk about the past, what's going on right now, and the future. Awesome. Yeah, the future being the um, biggest, most important part. What's up, Walt? Yep. No, well, I mean, I'm familiar with Brownells from the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, getting the catalog in the mail, which was kind of like at one time you get the catalog in the mail and just look, just like, oh, look at all this cool stuff. You know, yeah. Look at all this cool stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, kind of like, like, like like the Sears, yeah. like the Sears catalog, maybe. Well, yeah, just you no know, women yeah. in lingerie, you know. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, yeah, the same kind of stuff, you know, like mm. oh, look at these cool, you know, all this uh, paint and all this stuff like that. And I mean, that's how that was a gunsmith thing, or some of the people that worked on their guns, you know, their firearms. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't know who Brownells were. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were sh- they were shooters and, and gun owners because they weren't working on their guns. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, what you what yeah. you guys have done lately, I think, is um, I won't say I'll say genius a little bit. Um, the uh, it takes a team. <laughs> And I, and I, and I, and uh, I will collective ask you about genius, that too, collective really genius. I, I think there's been some conflict probably in that process too. I would imagine. Um, yeah. And, and forces worthwhile against is easy. easy. What was that, Pete? <laughs> Nothing worthwhile is easy. So. Yeah, absolutely. Brian Quick is asking if your microphone is on. I can hear you. Um, if you guys aren't hearing Pete out there, let us know so that we can correct that. Uh, Lola, are you hearing Pete? I think. Can you hear me? Yeah, Everybody I can hear can? you. I can hear you. Uh, go ahead, talk, Pete. Yeah, I guess uh, yeah. your voice is not matching. Oh, I'm not matching up. Yeah, that's uh, that's just going to be a well, little bit common. of the delay and stuff like that going yeah. on here. Okay. Uh, don't worry about it too much. That's because, you know, everyone's live. We're breaking the internet here. I'll make sure that I don't have – I'll turn off some of my uh, okay. internet stuff. Not my yeah. So to get, to get my, we'll, my, we'll, we'll my get mind network. straight, mm-hmm. it was it your, your dad or your granddad that started Brownells? Uh, my grandpa started in 1930, um, 1938. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, he started it in, when my grandpa, when my dad was born. So he, he had his first child, my aunt, my older aunt, uh, and realized that being a, running a gas station was not going to be a, a career that he could really follow. So he started doing gunsmithing and, and his gunsmithing stuff, all he was a really good writer as well. And he had all these buddies that were his friends, like, like, um, um, Bill Ruger, senior. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knew uh, he knew the Hornadies, knew Joyce, he knew everybody that was kind of in the business back then, and would write to them and ask them for extra parts. He had, he had a he had an innovative thing back in the day, back in the '40s, called called a back order. That was a <laughs> that was a cutting edge technology back in the '40s. Back order Bob is what they used to call him. <laughs> really. Yep, and that was so. He, Brownells pioneered the back order. That's interesting. <laughs> At least in this industry, right? it was. Yeah. Uh, they would send. He built a lot of trust because uh, it was one of those uh, things in our industry that you know, the handshake was all it took. So people would send him money, and when he got the part, he would send him the part. So he created the back order for us. Mm-hmm. Now today, when we have a back order, I mean the sirens go off and. And we get out the whips and start uh, saying, where's the product? Let's get going. Yeah. <laughs> so but back, yeah, 70, 80 years ago, it was, or 60 years ago, it was mm-hmm. a, uh, it was an innovation. Okay. So started that and just moved on from there. Yeah. Now, so, now 1938, you know, we're, we're still, uh, we're not involved with <coughs> things going on in Europe and 1939, there's Poland and 19, all of a sudden 1941, there's Pearl Harbor. What happened to Brownells during World War II? Well, the big catalog, we had to ration the paper. My grandpa has a med- had a medical. He was in the, he was in the cavalry in, in Iowa, one of the last mounted cavalrys. Went to Fort oh, really? 17. Wow. Yeah, we'll put, we have his DDT, his uh, discharge paper, and it said, uh, what did it say? Man of good reputation and decent horse riding was his discharge <laughs> paper. 
<laughs> so he got he got out on a medical, um, and my dad was too young to go. So in the 40s, we had to ration paper. We were rationing gas. We delivered by rail car. So uh, it, to even talk about it, you go, man, this must have been a long time ago. We mm-hmm. it was a horse drawn wagon that we would run stuff from the from the house that he was in down to the rail yard and wait for the train to come in, put it on the train and send it out. So things <laughs> things kind of, they didn't halt, but they slowed down. And we were shipping stuff to uh, to Europe, the European theater and the African theater back then as well. So guys would write over and say, mostly the snipers, the gun guys would write over and, and we'd send stuff uh, with the State Department or the, uh, the, um, the Army's blessing. Yeah, and I was going to say, what were well, ITAR rules or whatever? Is it ITAR? <laughs> there were no ITAR. Oh, okay. Right. No ITAR. We've no been ITAR. around <laughs> for ATF and in the formation of the ITAR, so, and then the commerce rules. So it's, yeah. yeah, we've been around a while. Yeah. That's, uh, that's cool. That's interesting. Uh, imagine how much stuff has changed over, what are we talking about, from 38 till now? Uh, what, 80-something years? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's amazing. So your dad was born, and then and, and your and your grand your grandfather was running everything, um, and then your dad grew up into running the company. Yeah, he was a navy man for a bit, and then came back from the navy right before Vietnam and started running started ex- greatly expanding the products um, mm-hmm. from um, just a hardcore gunsmith. My grandpa believed that. You just needed a hammer, one hammer, one screwdriver to be a good gunsmith. <laughs> to a large degree, he was, oh. he was, he was right to get the basics. But then, World War II really changed the, mm-hmm. uh, the function of a firearm, and technology came in, and mm-hmm. secondary uh, product makers came to marketplace. And that's my, when my dad, when he came back from the Navy between Korea and, and Vietnam, he really expanded into those, those uh, non-traditional brands like, like. Um, Jimmy Clark, so Clark Custom, or Ed Brown, those type of guys were coming out of uh, Korea and Nam and making up the 45s, and mm-hmm. he brought all the parts and all that kind of stuff to, to really expand that really thick book you all, we all make and produce right now. Yeah, so my, uh, my, my question um, in, in a lot of that would be, um, how was your dad prepared for this, right? How was your dad prepared to, to take over Brownells? Was there any kind of formal thing? That was done, or he just like he came back and then like yeah, you gotta you gotta start working here. He, he uh, basically came back and and uh, started a family right away, and so I needed a job, grandpa, and mm-hmm. he jumped right in. It's like I think employee number uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was a small company back then. Yeah. What number? By the way, the the son, the son is creating some serious problems over there in your place. I don't know. There's oh, probably a, a shade or something. Got a, he's got a sun mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sir. Just move that I don't know. Bit. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's a reflection. I don't know if there's any way to like close off a window, or we'll just have to no, wait. The, the the sun is setting. <laughs> yeah, because it's. Like, I can move this way a bit. No, it's cool. It's cool. Don't worry about it. We'll survive. We'll survive. Oh, I see what he's doing. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, no, that's can't cool. Hear me, you can't see me. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, where were we on that? Okay, and I was going to ask if Pete can go a little bit that way so that he's yeah. not cut off maybe the break. Yeah, Lola was say, was going to try to get you to position, but yeah, I think, listen, for the next couple of minutes, it's going to be tough anyway. There you go, right there, uh, right there. There right we there, go, Pete. how's that? Oh boy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, there you go, right there, boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, you guys know <laughs> Thanks, that, Lola. you guys know Pete's not a vampire because the sun... The sun's not taking him out. We got that one covered if anyone's w- worried about it. Right? Confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's good there. Okay, the the sun's going to keep moving no matter what we do. At some point, it's going to go down. Um, there, there we go. <laughs> All right, so... Um, but you were, you were mentioning... Uh, another dynamic to the whole... Uh, uh, gunsmithing world and all that was the availability of all the surplus weapons yeah right that right yeah people were so, modifying and doing all that stuff you know yeah yeah we came back when i started working it was uh, all about taking the well uh, we had a lot of mausers that were coming back in the cosmoline so we were doing a lot of custom stuff for uh, for people doing custom mausers or mm-hmm. uh, fixing those up and 
one of the first products I helped develop when I came back was taking the flat, taking the carrying handle off the flat tops or off the uh, the M16s, M14, or the uh, M2s that were coming out of Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So right. all those all those Colts that the soldiers were using out of Nam were were now we were cutting off the tops, and 20 years later, we're now we're putting the, the handle carrying handle back on. Yeah. Yeah. It's come kind of full circle. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever think like, man, um, if we would have just uh, stashed those guns away, we wouldn't even have to make a retro line. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, yeah. just be. Uh... Well, let me back up. If, if, the, if the U.S. government didn't destroy all that stuff. Right. You would have plenty of that stuff. But I've seen stuff that they destroyed. Like, for example, out at MacDill Air Force Base here, when they updated all their old AR-15s. And early early M16s to like M4s, they just yeah. basically take all those all those old parts and cut them up. Yeah, threw them in the dumpster. Yeah, so, why, I mean, that why would all they do sold. that? There was no way to salvage them. To like, I'm assuming they were machine guns or something. They didn't want. No, they, I mean, okay, an upper an upper is an upper. A barrel is a barrel. It doesn't yeah. know if it's a machine gun or semi-auto. That's the rules, my friend. Uh, yep. that's, those are, why, those are why do we rules. dump why do we dump armor personnel carriers and make a reef in the water oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't start <laughs> yeah 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 we do we we yeah listen the fish like it i don't know <laughs> right? Here, here's an example I, here's the example i use the u.s government you, you know in in britain you can't own a 22 but you can buy a tank right right but over here you can own all the guns you want but the government won't let you have a little bit of armor they're yeah. scared, you know, they're going to do something bad. So, yeah, I don't know. Yes, yeah. that's uh, that's tanks, a, tanks for I, everyone. I I agree. Yeah, I <laughs> I, uh, I I I stumbled into some early AR stuff when they did that. Somebody I knew was in the military out there and actually pulled stuff out of the garbage can. Mm-hmm. Their early their early pre uh, trapdoor stocks. Um, right. I even got a, I even got a couple of the early birdcage. I mean the try the try. The three 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 prong flash hiders, the lightweight ones. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I, I saw parts cut up that was like, holy cow, man! I mean, for a long time nobody wanted that stuff because it was you know, it wasn't the latest thing. But now that whole circle of you know life has came back around to the retro stuff, and people are ape crazy about that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, that's that's the way it goes. Do you guys have an informal um, or formal kind of like library or? Uh, museum or something of all the guns going back we we well we do uh, it's an informal one we have a our helpline the gun techs mm-hmm. that when you call up and ask for some gunsmith help you talk to this group of people there that's been uh been helping out other gunsmiths and do-it-yourselfers for decades they've got a library and but it's a bit of it's a bit of a it's guns that they've been working on okay. and been so it's not this pristine museum type stuff we do have some uh, interesting pieces that have come by our, or across the threshold that are in a, a more secure spot, and mm-hmm. we're starting to roll those out into our retail store because they're really fascinating. You know, we had a, for example, um, we've got uh, uh, the, the the Sharps rifle from Quigley, uh, Tom, Quigley down yeah, under, yeah, yeah. Quigley. yeah. It's coming back. It's, mm-hmm. it's out at the NRA right now, but it's coming back. Mm-hmm. And then we've got some other things. We've got a pygmy gun back from back in the 30s that uh, my grandpa got from a guy that was over in the Pacific. Oh, okay. Uh, we brought, brought all that kind of stuff back. Yeah. So we got some neat things. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so it, it, is there any thought of sometime, some point, putting something together? Or are you going to do something kind of in the store that people can come probably, in and see? Yeah, probably in the store right now mm-hmm. to try to gather... The, uh, just to kind of show that kind of stuff, and and uh, we, you know, I like I like all my firearms are using. You got to use them and touch them, so we don't want to have it behind glass. No one can touch it, so it's mm-hmm. kind of stuff that we can get out every once in a while and and uh, show people and let let the gunsmiths out there who've never seen some of these guns get their mm-hmm. hands on. Them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.